Hi, friends. It's me. Looking a little grizzled. I, I should probably shave at some point. Um, let's do a little sound check just to make sure you can hear me. Hi, everybody who's here. Can you hear me okay? Let me know. I'm going to paste a link to a doc here at the top. And that's the one that we'll be meeting on. I will just paste it here. Oh, you can't hear me. One second. Ah, you can. Great. Okay, good. So here is the link to the doc. I'm glad you're here. Let's check in. Um, what are you what are you looking forward to? That might be might yield some of the same answers, but let's see what happens. What are you looking forward to? I am looking forward to um, I'm leaving tomorrow. I'm going to North Carolina to be with my family to celebrate Thanksgiving. So I'm looking forward to games and I'm looking forward to um, eating healthy food like Usually when I eat with my family, like we kind of get crazy and like I buy a bunch of unhealthy food. So I'm looking forward to like eating more healthfully. Um, what else? Yeah, what are you all looking forward to? Give me a shout in the uh, in the text box. Uh, check in with me. You all may be so focused on essays right now that you're not even interested in checking in, which is okay. So let me make sure that everybody's got access to the dock. There we go. All right. Should be viewable. Try again. Looking forward to finishing your apps. And uh, what else? What else? Looking forward to finishing my says, Yeah, I knew if I asked that, you guys would all say this. Looking forward to Thanksgiving dinner. Cool. Me too. So let's get into this. Um, click the link and um, I will share that link with you in case you are, or rather I'll share my screen just in case you're not able to see it. One, one two, three, ta-da. So on this doc, you'll see, um, I'll, just, I'll, I'll just walk you through it really quick. Here's the link to session one of two. So if you didn't make it last time for some reason, don't worry. Everything we talked about and covered is right here. Um, and here's the, basically, yeah. And then they're all the Q and A's and all the sample, the, the questions or the personal insight questions I went over there. And then just a few quick reminders because I'm probably gonna come back to these. The 14 elements of comprehensive review are the 14 things that the UCs are looking for. And um, then the prompts are here. So if you are pasting a personal insight question, because most of the time today is going to be spent, you know, with me looking over your personal insight questions, giving you feedback. That seems to be most helpful. Um, and even if you're, I'm not looking at yours, hopefully you can see by the way that I'm talking about other people's, you know, sort of what the UCs are looking for. And then underneath this, this BB exercise. How many of you did the BB exercise? I'm just curious. If you did it, I think I'll be able to tell from your personal insight questions. If you didn't, I think I'll also be able to tell. Um, let's see. Underneath this, if you've got questions, you can type them right here. Or you can put questions in the chat box. Either way works. And then if you've got drafts, feel free to paste them below, as some of you already have. Cool. And then if you could just put your name and the, um, the prompt, that would be so awesome. Um, so let's see how we're doing. Uh, any comments or questions come in? Uh, let's see. Lydia says, I'm looking forward to one, going to my aunt's 50th wedding anniversary tomorrow. Congratulations to her and looking forward to dancing with my cousins. Awesome. I love it, Lydia. Thanks for that little glimpse into your life. Okay. Mehar, Safa, Nita, Selah, El Amy, Lydia, welcome back. Uh, underneath this, whoever is next, just feel free to add your drafts. And let's jump in. So here are Mehars. And what I did last time, which seemed to work pretty well, and I love what you're doing, Mehar is putting them in order. If you guys wouldn't mind just putting in um, in bold the prompt just to set it off so that I can kind of see it, that would be so awesome. So if, if, if you want to post all four, I'm okay with that. 
I may just spend a little bit less time getting to the nitty gritty and more time going big picture. The reason that is, is I want to spend about maybe five to 10 minutes per person. And then once I've gotten through everybody, um, then, you know, I can go ahead and come back through. Thank you for doing that. Thanks for formatting it for me. Great. Okay. So we'll start with Mehar. And because you've got all, you know, I'll probably spend a couple minutes on each one. And uh, let's just look at the topic. So one of the things I talked about last week was making sure that your topics are probably connected to activities you've been a part of. Because one of the things the UCs are interested in is how have you set yourself apart in the external world? And I didn't say this last time, but if you are a very curious person, great. And you are curious and intelligent in your mind, great. But then how did you take that curiosity and get it legs? What did you do with your curiosity? How did it, how did that curiosity manifest itself, for example, in your robotics club or in the ways that you uh, parse, you know, the ways that you, you know, code, for example, or um, I'm just thinking of a, a personal insight question that I was just reading like 20 minutes ago um, or playing football. So how does that quality, whatever it is, manifest in the world? That's what the UCs are interested in, in my humble opinion. But also, I, I think I have reason to believe that, having talked to the directors about this. Um, okay, so Mayhar's prompt number one, let's see, is uh, greatest talent or skill? Mindfulness. We read this last time, and I quite liked it. And the next one, how did you take advantage of a certain educational opportunity? Wharton Business Academy. I'm going to maybe highlight it. Maybe you could just do this. For each one that you're pasting, if you could just underline what your topic is, that would be awesome. Um, because what's interesting Sorry, I think I cut out there for a second. Um, am I back? Cool. Alex, who's on? Alex, if I cut out again, will you just shoot me a quick text so that it pops up? That would be awesome. Um, can you hear me now? Oh, great. Okay, sweet. Sorry for that tech glitch. The internet sometimes drops out. It only happens like 5% of the time. Not like, but I, I'm 5% of my courses, but it sometimes happens. Okay, cool. We're back. Thanks. All right, so let's dive in. My parents introduced me to mindfulness when I was diagnosed with ADHD. Initially, I laughed and resisted, wondering how facile breathing exercises could help anyone. Now, what's cool about this is that Mehar could have written an essay about or a personal insight question about ADHD, but notice that Mehar is focusing on the positive here. Here's what I did about it. So yes, there's a mention of ADHD, but there's no focus on the challenge. It's just like, here's what I did. Sometimes you give in to your parents' demands. I took lessons in breathing techniques to calm my mind, weekly meditation practice. You can see these are bullet points of the BB's exercise. I don't know if you did it or not, but I can see this is like in the what you did column. Weekly meditation practice, ability to be mindful, slowly develop what you learned. Started practicing mindfulness daily for 20 minutes, following my parents' orders. At first, it felt like an eternity. You can delete the space, but soon they flew by. Let me just do editing mode, suggesting mode. Uh, and I use mindfulness to rapidly de-stress before working on assignments, studying for tests, all these applications, getting in the zone for football games even. I realized, unlike prescription pills, mindfulness is actually a miracle pill. I've been able to listen, be patient, listen to all these values, and control my emotions. All will teach me the power of silence and being present. Aren't you kind of interested in being Mayhar's friend just by reading this? 
We're only like 150 words in and I've learned a ton about you. Beautiful work. Realizing the peace that mindfulness brought to my life and remembering chaos before it, I started teaching mindfulness. Up level, I'm gonna put a little in bold. Anytime I see like an up level, mode, actually I'm in bold because I don't want you to, I'm just gonna say, yeah, I'm gonna underline it. Don't underline it for your uh, essay or when you're submitting it. But this is like, this is a moment where we go, ah, now this person's taking it to the next level. At first, getting the boisterous kids to listen to me and engage in mindful breathing was a daunting task. That's a problem that might have been in the BB's column as they couldn't sit, sit still. But the following week, how did you solve it? Teach them mindful eating using Starburst. I know we went over this last time, but I just want to point out some stuff that I'm really loving about this because I think it's a, this is a great example of a great personal insight question. There's a lot we can learn from this. I was able to grab their attention and teach mindful eating. With their interest peaked, I could demonstrate mindful breathing. So it was kind of like a little gateway, starburst <laughs> bribe. Um, it was a sight to see the once rambunctious bunch silently breathing through a small hole in their mouth, the straw breathing technique, and bringing serenity into the classroom. And this is impact. This is a really clear evidence of impact. At UC, I hope to facilitate a community united through a universal human experience, breath, which transcends race or immigration. Maybe a different word for this. Um, what word, but immigration is a little bit ambiguous there, I think. At college and mental health and self-care can be crucial. This is the potential impact, in which case, unless the moment's unpleasant, in which case I'll share a Starburst. Lovely. Done after a tiny note below, above. I'm not even going to write it. I'm just going to tell you, Mayhar, I think that one's done. Great. As a football player, my life centered around jerseys, games, and scoreboards. Although my childhood dream of professional quarterback glory has faded, my passion for sports has held steady. The summer I attended, here's the thing I attended that is the educational opportunity. So again, I'm underlining the topic. I think it should be that clear in your opening. I think it's a great way to do it, to just be like, because again, these readers are skimming. From the start, we were competing in this business plan competition, charged with creating a product to revolutionize the sports world. Realizing the dangers of concussions and having suffered one myself, I wondered, what if a helmet could do more? With the resources and top minds in sports business at WSBA, my opportunistic mind, great. Uh, close to my heart, the hybrid helmet. Oh, we're mixing stuff now. This is cool. The hybrid helmet is a helmet that notifies coaches when a player has suffered enough force to cause a concussion. Cool. Trainers receive a notification if a player has to be taken out of the game as a cautionary measure to reduce the risk of long-term brain damage. Positive effects. Impact. The so what is there. I reviewed the helmet's business plan with representatives from each field in sports business, professional athletes and sports agents, discuss customers' needs. This is what I did about it. Or, sorry, the what I did column in that BB exercise is the first column. With the computer science gurus, I brainstorm its technical feasibility, potential risks. Oh, then bringing in AP computer science on AI was integrated. That's cool. Enabling it to track eye movement, capture the details. I research how data science algorithms can be applied to analyze data collected from the helmet. This sounds super smart. This is what I call geeky language in here. I love it. The entire process, creating a business plan, researching an effective solution, learning to protect intellectual property against existing patents, providing me an inside look in the world of business and innovation. You're crushing it, Mayhar. Presenting the idea and successfully answering questions about the helmet while defending it from skeptics became the driving forces behind, oh, by the way, we won the competition. Nice, subtle, I love it. We won it. But what was more important was innovation for the greater good and important, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's good, I'm glad you put that in. With the idea of the hybrid helmet in my back pocket, I can now help the professionals play more safely, help professionals play more safely, and reduce the dangers of America's favorite sport. Done, you are crushing it still, two for two, love it. Um, significant challenge. In movies, you watch Tom Brady pull his helmet off and shake his sweaty head around for most anonymous players, football players. There's a moment of glory. For me, it's different. Ooh, great opening. Great lead in. Um, raghead, I hear from the corner of the locker room. I'm underlining this again because this is where we see what the topic is. What is the most significant? What is a significant challenge? It doesn't have to be the most significant challenge. I'm Sikh. We do not cut our hair and wear it in a turban. We do not cut our hair and wear it in a turban. Um, we do not cut our hair. I would just do this. Uh, we wear it in a turban. To my peers, the turban is associated with terrorism. As part of a group that's profiled, I'm accustomed to these taunts. I recognize the sports world is not accustomed to Asians, much as a player with a physical appearance that evokes fear. Uh, this distracted me from classwork. I'd miss important lectures and found myself having to self-study frequently. Oh, I'm sorry. That sucks. To survive, to play the sport I love, and to not let these distractions affect my grades, I muster the courage to initiate candid conversations. Face the predicament. How do I start these conversations? I wanted to find a common denominator. So I created Bread Together. Bread Together aims to bring people together to share and create bonds over meals. You see what you see what Mayar did there? Segwayed from one topic to another. Love it. Here's what I did about it. 
Bread together. What does it do? Brings people together to share and create bonds over meals. A safe place to have heart to heart discussions about everyday bias and issues, learn from one another, and more importantly, bond over one commonality food. I love it. At the first event, me to seek. I serve. This is awesome. I love your sense of humor. There's another quality that I'm getting about you. One thing that I want to point out, and I'll, I'll go and do this in a second because Mayhard, these are like finished, beautiful products, um, is I'm going to go through and I'm going to just name some of the, Actually, I'll do it while we're doing this. One of the things, and you might have seen this in the videos that you're looking for is like, what are the core values that are coming through? Here, I'm getting sense of humor. Um, and I get it in other places too. But I also get, you know, ambition and like commitment to social justice and equality. It's awesome. It ignited powerful discussions. I addressed the curiosity of my peers regarding my turban, showing how it's worn, and with a new, a few traditional Bangra dance moves. These conversations educated me just as they did others. Some of my peers share of the comments were meant to be jokes. I learned my peers often make these comments from a place of insensitivity rather than malice. Nice. So there's empathy here. I like this. This is like shows empathy in a really lovely way. Um, these experiences also taught me the power of perception, the value of self-expression and advocacy, and the importance of having difficult conversations amazingly over food. Lovely. Done. You're crushing it. All right. Fourth one. Here we go. Viewing images of starving children, displaced family and war, uh, families in war-torn towns, I felt moved to help those impacted by the Syrian refugee crisis. Um, yeah. Do you need a dash or you may not? I think you can just delete the dash. I looked up refugee sell resettlement agencies nearby and joined a welcome team to help a newly arrived family from Afghanistan. Look, at, look how small the notes I'm making. I'm just telling you to delete a space. My first goal was to help integrate the family and make them feel at home. While I assisted the two boys, I eaten their fun with homework. Their dad shared they were not making friends at school. So here's what I did, helped them with homework. Also what I did, uh, joined a welcome team. Knowing firsthand the power of sports, ah, cool. I taught them soccer and football. Soon, sports at school became the catalyst for the boys assimilating. Okay, so here's what I did about it, and here was the positive impact. I was relieved to see the seeds of integration blossoming in the boys at school. Awesome, but not stopping there. Now, some people would make the whole personal insight question about that, but not Mehar. While I was there, Arifa, the mom, I haven't even read this, I just have a sense, shared her passions for sewing with me. As a scout who needed patches sewed, I think you can say sewn, and uniforms altered frequently. I knew Arifa could monetize her sewing talent. What? I drove the customers to collect clothes and dropped them off for alterations, picking them up after she worked her magic. This, you're incredible. Uh, I could see the joy in Arifa when for the first time she could earn money, something that wasn't possible back home. When I turned to Arifa to alter my prom suit, she refused to take my money. I felt humbled by the dignity that came with her search for freedom. Wow. The impact of my work extended far beyond this family. It was seen throughout the community that began to love and appreciate refugees and their unique talents. Awesome. Working with refugees helped me dispel myths about them. I realized the importance of being the voice for the voices not heard. Um, at UC, I hope to continue my work with marginalized communities, helping them monetize their talents and enjoy experiences similar to those with Zai family. Amazing. I, I think you're done, Mehar. Like, congratulations. I hope this course has been useful for you. I hope your activities list is done. In fact, Mehar, if you want to put your activities list at the bottom, once we go through everybody's personal insight questions, I think it's going to be probably a pretty good one. So that might be a nice example for folks. But I mean, it's kind of like, you're done. Congratulations. I don't know if you needed me or not, or this course, but great work. Sip of tea. Setting the bar high, Mehar. Not that you're competing, although are you? All right, how have you prepared for your intended major, including your readiness to succeed once you enroll at the university? So let me just see, okay. So these are not in order yet. So if you wouldn't mind everybody, because this is the greatest talent school, and this will come later. So I, I, I'm pretty sure, but I'm pretty sure that this one will be like six or so. And the reason I want to do that is that when you're reading these, I, I, I like to sort of edit them in the order that the reader will read them, which is usually an order by number, as far as I've been told. All right, but let's look at these. Here are two from Safa. Here we go. Most people don't associate science and math with creativity, but I do. Through problem solving and critical thinking, some of my most impressive breakthroughs happen. No need to put this in quotes. Some of my most impressive breakthroughs happen when I apply the scientific method, particularly in my everyday life. When I was 16, my curiosity in sciences led me to take an intro chemistry class at my local community college. Cool. As a homeschooler, this is my fir the first time mom didn't double as my lab partner. Great. Love it. Humor, again. You know, I know these are straightforward statements, but it's possible. To, in like, it's just a sentence like that to show humor beautifully. 
I anticipated walking into chemistry lecture to learn about the stabilizing effects of resonance or lab to start the next part of our colorful Werner complex synthesis. And I was and still am a regular at faculty offices where I spend countless hours a week quizzing my teachers in hopes of a deeper conceptual understanding. Great. Last summer, I was hired as a chem lab technician. Following an intensive training, I was chosen from amongst my peers to become the lead prep worker for this year due to my willingness to learn. Great. This has given me the opportunity to co-author lab protocol, what I did, alongside experienced faculty, as well as being the sole, this is great by the way, as well as the sole intern overseeing that our classes are always prepped and stocked with the chemicals they need. This internship has made me a better student by allowing me to associate my work on paper with something tangible. On the other hand, and the transition is just a bit awkward. I'm a bit, I'm able to apply the problem solving skills that I learned in my classes to my work. And when something goes wrong, I can use those skills to come up with an effective solution. But um bum bum. I think I would replace this with specifics. Um, so what you're saying here, whoops. What I think you're saying here is that you've learned some stuff you've been able to apply elsewhere. Um, so but um bum bum. Could you replace this with a specific or two you're probably only going to have room for one the request of one of my professors i also started tutoring other college students in chemistry of course you did by coaching my peers i've reinforced my own knowledge as well as come up with creative new ways to conceptualize ideas one of my trademark methods good good example when i realized there was a gap in how students were visualizing net ionic equations my new approach to explaining this was to set up different peakers beakers <laughs> i thought beakers was a weird play and use molecular molecules to demonstrate each step in this reaction okay you're doing great and you're asking where do i go from here let's see how much room you've got 343 not much maybe just 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 a brief line on what you want to do in the future you know um maybe maybe two sentences max uh, whoops, and cut a bit from before, from earlier, you know, from earlier to make room. Okay. Sorry, I should write out two. I usually write out one through 12 because there are different rules on that. Um, what would you say is your greatest talent or skill? All right, also from Safa. When I walked into East West Kung Fu for the first time, definitely a different topic. I like it. I wasn't expecting my interest to last very long. I always had more of a sit on the sidelines and cheer at it too when it came to sports. By the way, that personal insight question above so far, I didn't give many notes because it's great. I really think it's giving a clear sense of how you prepared and what you're about. Um, you know, I think it's, yeah, I just give us a sense of what's next. Uh, I wasn't expecting my interest to last very long. I always had more of a sit on the sidelines and cheer at it too when it came to sports. But at the request of my parents, I started to train at least until I reached Blue Belt. I started to train at least until I reached Blue Belt, they said. Um, clarify this. Um, somewhere in between throwing my first pine, learning my kata, Japanese word, meaning the way it should be done. Oh, I didn't know what kata meant. Cool. I used to say that because I used to take karate, but I didn't know what that meant. A mere after school pastime turned into an obsession. Oh, cool. After classes, I'd head directly to the studio, train for hours on end. Didn't come naturally. In the time I could earn a single stripe, my peers had already tested for their next belt. But I was determined that with enough practice, a little comma here, uh, I could do the same. Attended every class, every seminar, every conference. Oh, wow. Realizing my str my struggle, my coach started to give me extra lessons. I would say a different word here because it's not necessarily your struggle. It's like, is there a positive quality instead? And I don't mean something cheesy. Don't say like my desire to succeed or my my hard, my work ethic because that's going to be kind of how everybody says it. You know, it's, it's find a way to say that, that, that has that same feel, but that sounds a little bit different. My coach started to give me extra lessons, helped me build my strength and endurance. Eventually, she decided I needed a little extra push. Tournaments, I was anxious. Performing, hearing her critiques was one thing. Having a crowd watching was different. Regardless, trusted her instinct, trained harder. When the day came, put my fears aside, won the gold medal. I was finally beginning to see the results. Awesome. I've been able to share my ability with others by becoming a training instructor, providing me the opportunity to pass on my knowledge to other students. Started by running simple drills, but now I'm able to run classes on my own. Also, Worked with other trainees, started once a week class specifically for teens. We work on practical applications. Although I've had to cut my hours since starting college, I carry the patience, leadership skills, and trust that I learned in martial arts training. Okay. So I would say more on this um, can trim above. So what I'm interested, this is that last column, Safa, of like how have you applied this elsewhere in your life? I want to hear more about how you've you know, related this stuff. Do you have any room? Let's see. 
If you don't have room, I'm gonna suggest a couple places where you can cut. I think you do though. No, you don't, 357, okay. So the, the main, qual here's how to cut, For this is for everybody. The way you cut is you decide what are the main qualities that I wanna show in this paragraph. Once you've shown those qualities, you can kind of cut the rest. So ask yourself, what qualities do I wanna show? Once you've shown them, you can trim other parts. Cool? Give you an example. Uh, I know that hard work, you know, is, is supposed to be important here. And here we go. Uh, I attended every class, every seminar, every conference, accessible to me. Like that establishes it. Now, I know that what you're doing here is sort of saying, no, but I worked super duper hard, but it's kind of doubling down on this, I'm, I really persevere. And what I think, the reason I'm suggesting trimming this, so what I'm gonna suggest is like cut this in like, so it's like 195, you know, can you cut this to like 140, maybe trim uh, 60 to 50 to 75 words uh, to make room for more applications below? I think it'd be nice to expand on that, okay? Give me a little more so what, um, okay? Use the last column in the BB's exercise to brainstorm more. Now, if you guys are sitting around waiting, when do you think I'm gonna get to my personal insight question? Probably some of the things that I'm saying to you will apply. So don't tune out. Let's see, but -dum -bum -bum. I've got some questions popped in. Um, will there be another webinar? I haven't finished my activities list, but I would love to have a review. <laughs> Sorry, Mayhar, there won't be. Um, I'm going to, I'm, but you're gonna be okay. Follow my instructions. I, I have a feeling you're gonna be great. And you'll also see the examples on the other doc. Um, okay, Nita, here we go. Describe the most significant challenge you face and the steps you've taken to overcome this challenge. Now let me just look really quick and see how many folks are in queue, because I might need to start going a little not faster. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm liking going this speed because I think it's, you know, this is useful stuff, but I wanna make sure everybody gets at least a little glimpse if, we, if possible. All right, so let's see. With a GPA of 2.8 and an ugly E on my transcript, uh, a result of emotional and financial pressures of impending immigration. Okay, so let me just look at all the prompts, the topics really quick. So there's five, and then there's one. Nito, why didn't you put one at the top? So everybody, please put these in order of, of how they, of like the numbers, of like how they're listed. It just makes it a bit easier. And then, um, so let me just grab that. Don't do it. I'll do it. Um, let's see. All right. So let's see. Prompt one or seven. Oh, maybe you were doing that. And maybe I'm just being silly. Um, okay. So describe the most, let me just read them, read them how you've got them. Let's, I'll just assume that this is the order that you want them to read them in. All right, with a GPA of 2.8 and an ugly E on my transcript, a result of emotional and financial pressures of impending immigration, I traded Dubai for California. After joining a community college, I discovered the American education system to be drastically different from my high school's UK-based curriculum. When it soon became apparent, so again, and if you guys, if you would be willing to, just underline the topic, like when it appears in your personal insight question, just so that I can sort of see it. When it soon became apparent that I've been had negligible acquaintance for the American education system, my parents appearing less familiar with it, I refused to let cultural shock hinder my education and impact my future. Having no one to guide me, I started guiding myself. Couldn't afford a private counselor, found an obliging confidant in Google. <laughs> Hours extensively researching and absorbing any information I could on this new system that had a seemingly endless stream of workloads in formats I didn't know. Uh, okay, so we got the challenges, overwhelmed, joined tutoring clubs, what are parentheses, haunting instructors, Haunting instructors, maybe a different word here. Um, but with every answer I received, comprehend my new surroundings a little better. Often it's been three years. Cool. Uh, and then lots of specifics in here, which is great. Actively seeking friends. I developed an understanding. This is great. Okay. I think you've done a nice job of setting us up and not spending too much time on the challenge. So for anybody who using, uses using this challenges format, this is about how long I think you need. 88 words, right? That's only like a fourth of your budget. And then getting into the, what I did about it, what I learned. And there's tons of great stuff in here about what you did. What did you learn? In retrospect, community college has simultaneously been a prime obstacle and opportunity. Cool. 
Well, at first, it's un, you need this apostrophe here. It's unfamiliar teaching style that oppressed me. Different phrase here. Um, maybe just rephrase. Uh, community college soon became a means for liberty. Um, you might just use more specifics here. Um, or just cut this. Um, what else? Yeah, uh, personal autonomy. Yeah, just maybe cut that and then go into what else. Uh, it wasn't a choice. Excelling in proposed to be a challenge. Um, excited for the challenge. Left this is a bit general. Uh, I think you can cut this and replace with more specific uh, values gained, lessons learned, uh, as I'm suggesting above, like in the previous sentence. All right, let's see. You sure you can help me? I glanced at my 2D confused. You aren't even American. Prejudice, we meet again. <laughs> great, great line. Oh, I mean, I think it's inspired by that. Uh, a personal insight question I showed you that's like, you know, sexism is alive and well in 2017. Uh, this wasn't the first time I've received such, or you could say I'd, I'd received such comments though, though seeing the other two T's in our group maintain silence, I was unnerved. Um, my initial instinct was to leave the session. So this is like, you aren't even American. So it's, here's the topic really clearly. My initial instinct was to leave the session, but evading problems have been a dominant strategy of mine. That's great. I love this quality. So this is like the quality here of like facing things head on, transparency, courage, all those things are in here. It's really lovely. Um, okay. I began thinking of different tactics. Uh, and you can just cut this if you want. Um, yeah, to employ is fine. You could maybe cut that. Since I believe mutual respect to be crucial for encouraging cultural cognizance over the next few weeks, uh, establish a culture of beginning, beginning sessions, maybe beginning sessions by revealing a lesser known fact about ourselves, the group. Oh, by encouraging, um, I establish a culture of beginning sessions. Uh, so maybe just just clarify this. It's something like like you you encourage folks to share lesser known facts, and that created a culture of something else. So I'm just going to say rephrase this. Though this small icebreaker through this small icebreaker, after my two Ds and grabs the game insight in each other's personality, we were good friends. Cool. Oh wow! Eventually, my two D apologized. Um, together, we're able to respect one another, dispelling stereotypes, being more open-minded. I think this repeats a little bit. They could now think deeper about their research topics that were void of old biases. Um, repeats, you could cut and use this later, like use the space for more stuff later. And then this is maybe too much of a happy ending because, I mean, certainly they're uh, they're they're going to have biases. Like they're still going to have biases, right? They're never going to be voidable biases. Um, we have belief systems that we are, you know, raised with, and we can't get rid of them. We can become aware, of, more aware of them. But I would just qualify that a little bit. Being a tutor comes with its fair share of conundrums, though I've recognized patience and perseverance be my secret weapon. Cool, patience and perseverance be my secret weapons. Maybe plural. Um, Weapons. Uh, as an introverted leader, I choose to lead by example. Listen, comprehend their viewpoint, initiate group discussions, ensuring everyone's an active participant. I love all this about you. I'm, I'm liking you more and more as I read this. That, that's one of the other things I'll say too, is like if you can write these in a way that encourage, that like get the reader to like you, I don't know how, how you do that. You lead with your heart and you you know share qualities that are important to you, uh, get specific. That's what, what I like about this is that I, I wouldn't read this in somebody else's, like, I might read, as a leader, I choose to lead by example, but as an introverted leader, there's something a little bit more specific there that's setting you apart. Um, leadership, I've learned, is not solely about reaching a definite goal by any means possible. It's about bringing people together, bringing together a group group of diverse people, encouraging them to be and do their best, put aside their differences and coalesce unique ideas into something powerful. Okay, it gets a little bit, you know, cliche. Um, this can work, this works fine. Um, the more specific, you get the more you'll stand out having said that like it's fine it works really well it's not going to be like a make or break thing it's just kind of like a, a general college essay writing note about specificity a general note about specific here's a general note about specificity all right um so we've got that one and then we've got this and then i think this one comes next how have you prepped for your intended major 12-year-old me spent an entire summer marveling at the existence of three-dimensional characters in Harry Potter. First time attached to the characters, reading fiction has become integral, led to my interest in psychology. We read this one last time, so I'm gonna kind of zoom through it. Hailing from a conservative background, 
it wasn't until 11th grade that I started doing, studying this, getting into psychology, love it, began to learn why people can refuse help. Classic Community College allowed me to explore subdivisions in psychology. I love the way you just jumped. A chance to study its key concepts and, and now I could apply concepts to my surroundings, operant conditioning, spotlight effect. Great examples, love it. Soon, I became the free of cost counselor in my friends group. Great, empathic listener, um, swallowed my discomfort. At a UCIC to develop a further understanding and obtain practical experience and research. I firmly believe studying psychology will help me fathom. Great, great, keep going. Like, yeah, one more sentence. Um, what in particular would you like to study? You've got a little more room there. I firmly believe it will help me fathom the entity I want to dedicate my efforts to people. I like the way you're saying that. From resolving problems to guiding someone to achieving their goals, thrive in making a difference in lives. Cool, this is beautiful. I really like this. Making a difference in lives is a little bit, you know, common, but I love this language. It shows that you're a systems thinker. I'm excited by reading this. You're doing great. You guys are doing awesome. I'm so excited by these. Usually this does not go this well. I just wanna say that. Usually I give many, many more notes. Um, so anyway, um, Selah, let's take a look. Let me just see if other people have signed up or if we're kind of in the same. I, got, I moved through those pretty quickly. Starts on page 24, says Ryan. Thanks for the heads up. Okay, whoops, sorry. I just meant to do this. There we go. I do not mean to cross you out, Nita. There we go. Okay. There. Um, cool. Here we go. We're doing great. Three students and like 30, we're, I'm spending about 10 minutes a person. Okay. This bodes well. Also, y'all are just crushing it. So I'm just reading them and going, nice job. Next. Um, okay. Sayla, an example of your leadership experience. You have a library of girls aspiring to be future women of tech. What's the first thing you teach them? Java, HTTP, what's a Boolean? Nope. As a founder of Girls in Tech Club, I decided the most important thing I could teach these future women of technology was to be kids. Dun, 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 hook, love it. Yes. I started Girls in Tech after enrolling in AP Computer Science. Captivated by the outlet for innovation and creativity code provided, I had to spread the word. I remember the first meeting, stoked to jump in our lesson in Python. <gasps> However, my heart sank because I was met by the groans of members claiming they weren't techie people. Great. I love, you, you've got a great sense of rhythm and timing and like just how stories are told. You raise our hopes, but then you drop them, which is great. Although initially dismayed by the lack of enthusiasm, again, doing that turn thing, I realized in my eagerness to teach them all I could, I'd forgotten, I forgot, I, I would just use the um, past perfect. I'd forgotten the essential first step to equip these girls with a growth mindset the mindset of a kid. They couldn't label themselves as lacking tech skills when they spent under five minutes thinking about code. In approaching a familiar subject as adults were consumed by the fear of not immediately being masters and become reluctant. And often, let's, let, I'm, you know, I'm really encouraging y'all to like qualify. Because not always, uh, as children, that reluctance is minimal to non-existent. Uh, thus, we rapidly learn new skills. For learning to take place, code had to be like finger paint we unrestrictedly dove into as preschoolers. Uh, though our first paintings were no Monet's, it was in the process of mixing our fingers in paint that we discovered our edge. Encouraging these girls to explore code, knowing they'd inevitably struggle, gave them the opportunity for self-discovery, and coming to terms with parts of computer science they loved and hated, they effortlessly found their strengths. This is great. Each girl learned to integrate coding into their passions, whether it be in biotech, artificial intelligence, database management, they made coding their own. I'm loving this. I was fortunate to witness the increased confidence that came from these girls as they found ways to tech, to align tech with their passions. Uh, I think it's where you sw like switch these words. These are tiny notes and use their tech skills to make an impact. And while yes, um, I believe teaching code is imperative, it's approaching learning as a child that will benefit these girls long-term. If we apply this to all aspects of our lives, we will never stop improving. Okay, I'm just gonna highlight this examples of extreme language. Anytime, listen to me, I'm using anytime. Many times when I see extreme language, it makes me go, is this true? It makes me think of all the times when it's not true. Like if we apply this to all aspects of our lives, the growth mindset, can we really apply it to all aspects of our lives? Even if I can find one example of something that you wouldn't apply it to, then it kind of 
breaks down the logic there and we will never stop improving. Not technically true, right? So anyway, when you catch yourself using extreme language, this is a note for everybody, all, every, only, never, see if you can qualify it because chances are it's not technically true. So just tweak that. But again, tiny notes. Tweak these, uh, tweak. I'll, I'm just gonna say qualify this or just new last line. All right, you're doing great. I mean, I love this. It's so clear. I like your sense of humor at the start. I see that you're a leader. It's specific. I mean, the only thing that I would say is like, if there are other ways that you applied this, I mean, I don't know, I don't, because I don't know your background and know what else you've been into. You know, sometimes um, students will take like the last paragraph and be like, this came in handy when the next year I applied it to this other thing, right? So you could jump to another topic. Sometimes you can kind of squeeze in a couple topics in the same one. Um, and what you would, or you would just like kind of cut some of the details in here. Um, or as I was saying earlier, like you could connect it to like, here's how you apply this in your life. Um, cause right now th this is a fine ending. I just want to say again, it's great. Totally submittable. If you want to pack in more stuff, you could. And again, the two things that I would mention are like, what other projects did you get involved with that were like related to this? If, if there were any, or how did you apply what you learned in life? How did you apply the growth mindset? Um, okay. Academic subject. These, okay. Let me just move this up because they'll probably read the other one first. So, excuse me. Um, let me just scoot this up, because this one is six. Personal insight question six. The reason why y'all, that I'm doing, that I'm reading them in order, is because as I understand it, uh, and it could be that different readers do it different ways, but as I understand it, readers are going to typically read them in order of number, because that's how they'll appear for them. Okay. And if anybody knows differently, let me know. Or if you know of a reader who's like, no, I like to read these backwards, you know, somebody's aunt or something. Um, okay. German woman, smile plastered between rosy cheeks, pink balloons, labor and delivery level two, Hispanic mother, beige uniform, fatigue, small child. I'm gonna fast forward a little bit. Sala de emergencias, nivel uno. Vietnamese old man, staggering, takes final puff, plants button ashtray, uh, respiratory third floor, hospital doors are open to all. As a weekly front desk volunteer at the Park City Hospital, you do a nice job with your hooks. I'm really digging them. One might believe I have dreams of pursuing medicine, but I'm simply apt about understanding people in their entirety. Cool. And in their entirety is another example of extreme language. Watch this. I have dreams of pursuing medicine, but I'm simply apt about understanding people. Do you hear how that like resonates? I just want to understand people. It's simple. It's like and you've got this white space after it that like gives us some like, oh, dang, I'm into it. In their entirety, the reason, again, extreme language, I'm like, can you understand people in their entirety? Is that possible? I don't think so. Anyway, sophomore year, I enrolled in AP Psych, fascinated by skin air conditioning, adaptive reflexes. I took particular interest in the behavioral perspective as it applied this to my primary passions. Uh, actually, particular interest in the behavioral perspective as it applied to my primary passions. I think you're maybe, we're not wanting that word. Entrepreneurship and design. Psychology taught me the influence of visual communication, boosting, wow, cool, cool applications. I discovered a product's prosperity lies in its appearance. Um, what you have here looks really good. Oh, wow. I'm, I know I'm fast forwarding, just, you know, just kind of get in our 10 minute budget, but it's great. My entrepreneurial abilities improved in learning about influences on motivations and buying decisions. Emotional responses often facilitate action before pragmatic thinking can occur. Hmm. You might simplify this a little bit. Bind. One's emotional responses often facilitate action before pragmatic thinking can occur. I can probably slow down and think about what you're saying there, but these readers are going to be reading twice as fast as me. So you might just simplify this a little bit. I use this in my social change centered apparel business, KOI emphasizing the identity empowerment. Good, I like that you're switching topics here. This is kind of what I was suggesting above. You could do a kind of switch topics paragraph. Not, sorry, you're not switching topics. You're just kind of working in another, here's another thing that I've done in my life. Uh, another bullet point on the, you know, the, uh, the resume. I continued my study of psych over summer break, competed in this, 
placing 10th for the state of Utah, grats. And while research and text, and by the way, that's a nice way to like just mention, oh, by the way, and because they go, oh, that's that's pretty impressive. Yes, it's going to be in your activities list, but if you work it in subtly like that, and the, the personal insight question is not primarily about your achievements, I think you're okay. While research and textbooks have been essential in my learning, they cannot replace the understanding gained in interacting with a broad range of people. What better place to do so than where everyone must go at some point? The hospital. Um, so just do a double dash or a colon there. With each shift, come into contact with a variety of people. My mission is each individual's satisfaction. This is a bit broad because you can't give all those people that you mentioned a bit abroad. Um, it's, it's, it's a bit far reaching, right? People are gonna be dissatisfied for many, many, many reasons. Uh, the healthcare system provides a hidden opportunity for exposure. Each person I encounter has a chance to deepen my understanding of humanity, which is the most essential component of design and mission. This repeats, so different ending. And one, one, one I'll sometimes tell students is to write three different endings and then show it to someone and be like, which do you think is best? It'll help you work on your own innovation and creativity. Okay, third one. Park City is the second most wealthy micropolitan area in the US, yet 60% of our community lives beneath the poverty line. People running the resorts, ah, these are people, these are the people, I would say the, these are the people running the resorts, shops, restaurants, and hotels. The labor force, by what makes Park City a renowned winter destination. The labor force are, are, are behind, let me just say, the labor force are what make parks, the labor force what makes Labor force is what makes, got it, what makes Park City a renowned winner. And yet, they're struggling, um, yet many are, I would just say many, many of its members are struggling um, to meet basic living needs, such as food. This is, I didn't know this. Um, Park City is over, so this is citing the problem. This is the Elon Musk exercise, right? Here's the problem. Park City's got over 700 food businesses, each wasting this amount of food. How could hunger be an issue? What will become of Park City when, so all these big questions, something had to be done. I rounded up two of my classmates and food for good was born. Great. If you don't know what the Elon Musk exercise, right now you're following it to a T by the way. Look at that, it's in the course guide. It's in, I think lesson two. It'll walk you through the structure, it's really solid. It's like, here's the problem, here's why it was a big deal, here's what we did about it. You can even go like this. Food for Good is an application that efficiently facilitates the exchange of food between restaurants with excess food and food banks. Wow. Restaurants log extra food items in the app. Food banks are notified. And you're amazing. It's collected immediately. A simple concept, but one that can have immense impact on a community and waste prevention. Um, on waste prevention. Yep. We didn't need to make more food. Just enact a new system. Maybe just build. Maybe just instead of enact. Uh, after six months spent designing, coding, debugging our product. Um, the bugging part we presented at the Park City Film Series received overwhelming support. Cool. Restaurants immediately jumped on board. We're currently testing our system with the Christian Center Food Hope we can add more restaurants to the system. Awesome. Uh, I, you can just put this together. This is a, a again, tiny notes. Um, and this is awesome. But it was in sharing our idea with those relying on the food banks. But it was in sharing this, that I realized the significance of the work. We, can you say we were doing here? Because then it's more like team. These people express their overwhelming appreciation. These people, uh, these people just sounds a little bit distance. Um, so I just rephrase this. A uh, young mother and housekeeper of the Grand Hyatt, for example, admitted she felt overlooked within the bustling parks, but knowing that someone was working with their interest in mind made her feel a part of the community. Uh, this isn't an exact quote, but knowing that someone was working with, this sounds a little too perfect. So I would say, I would say just take away the quotes admitted she felt overlooked take away the quotes because then we kind of like question like did she literally say that and also she wouldn't say her she would say it made me feel part of the community take away the quotes it was satisfying to produce a mobile app uh, that can make such a difference in the purpose of the quality of life seeing technology i realized with ingenuity and tenacity i can have a real impact on others a bit general uh, you know it's fine um but could be trimmed or you know cut you know, I'm glad to have made a difference. Could be the ending. Let's see where we're at word-wise. You say you're over, but I don't think you're that much over. Yeah, you're good. Just trim. Trim this and you're. I think you're good. This is awesome. I think it's another triumph. I think that all of these, like 
are like pretty submittable. You you all have shown up with like fantastic work today, which is making it really easy for me to go through these relatively quickly. Um, so let's check around on the board. We'll probably do one more set and then we'll take a little break. Rayuf has joined us. Welcome. So that was Sayla, I believe. Devin is next. Let's see. Is Devin next or is it Amy? So Sayla, great job. Lovely. Tiny notes. Amy. Is Devin next or Amy? I can't tell. Um, Lydia. Okay. I think Devin is next, but let's, I'll work with Amy. Amy, if you want, just, just, or Devin, just post your personal insight questions right under Amy's and we will take a look. Let me see if there's anything from, uh, let's see. Um, ah, Ahmed is saying, you said to use that for seven. My counselor at community college suggested one. It, it doesn't matter too much. Um, I think you're fine either way. Let's see. Yes, AJ Upili, feel free to post them at the bottom. If I've got time, I'll totally get to them. Um, and Sayla said something sounds so much better. Cool. Okay. Let's look at Amy's. Devin, if you're listening, just post yours right under Devin's and I'll get to yours after the break. Okay. Let's dive in. Describe an example of your leadership experience. So we're talking about leadership and thank you for highlighting the topic. Joining cheer, I never anticipated to require a back handspring, uh, a full up or a switch up as I do, I've given the privilege of being the main flyer and the opportunity to guide and advise my teammates. Cool. So we're talking about cheer and we're talking about being the main flyer. So I became the base of our stunts um, and improved my communication and trust, trial and error and attempt to prevent injuries. Through the past few years, the skills of required went beyond the limits of cheerleading. In class, I've taken the initiative in group projects, established a form of communication. Cool. Give an environment where I felt comfortable to state their ideas. More specifics would help. A role model. Um, specifics. You got plenty of room. Um, and same here. Specifics. That's what's going to help flesh this thing out. Otherwise, it's going to sound like every other cheer essay, you know? In addition, become a role model for the children, and you can even make this a separate paragraph if you like. Here's another way that you've impacted. Establishing rapport and encouraging them to make ethical decisions. Um, connect this back to cheer. Like, how did cheer help you learn, I'm gonna put in brackets, stuff that helped you do this? Respectively, the lessons I've learned from cheer, um, so my work as an oncologist requires authority and ability to communicate effectively. Yeah, so the connection here, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. so I think you're doing kind of like a type B personal insight. So by type B, I mean like a personal statement. Here's what I want you to do. I'm gonna send you on a little homework assignment, Amy, and I think it'll improve this, um, this personal insight question. So I want you to actually let me just show you where it is. Type B college essay guy. For anybody who's looking to basically write about what they want to study, and here are some qualities that have combined. I talk about this a lot in my other course, which is pay what you can. So I'm not trying to sell you guys on something right now. Um, I mean, I'm trying to sell you on this idea, but I'm not trying to like upsell you on another course. Um, if you, if you check out this personal insight question, not personal, I keep going back and forth, this personal statement, there's an exercise that you can do and it's at the bottom of that. And um, I would say, try the exercise um, I described here. And I, I think this might totally change this draft. I think it would add a, a ton more content. It'll give you lots more content and make the oncologist ending feel a bit more inevitable. Right now, it's a bit too surprising. In other words, it's a bit random. Random in the sense that we just don't have enough hints or clues that when you say oncologist, we're like, oh yeah, great oncologist. We're gonna be like, oh, I guess I could see how there are some oncologist qualities. But if you do that exercise, um, 
that'll help. The exercise above will help. Okay. Your greatest talent or skill? Surfing. Living 10 minutes from the beach, it wasn't a surprise the ocean would be a huge part of my life. Surfing. Goal of mine, achieving it was another story due to an accident, but achieving it was another story due to an incident of drowning. Huh. Refusing to allow my fear to stop me from pursuing my desire, embarked on a journey to train myself to get over my anxiety and learn how to surf. Um, so I'm, I'm curious by the incident of drowning. That raises a whoa for me. Let's see where we go, where it goes. Embarked on a journey, get over my anxiety, paddling deep enough to acquire momentum, to catch a wave, accomplish my mission, feeling of euphoria. Surfing's brought a sense of balance and control. Great. Getting right into application. I love it. Through challenges during wipeouts and being empowered through massive waves, give me the freedom to travel as I skim along the waves of the water. Most people would assume it's a simple sport, but for me, it was more than that. Surfing was an art, as I've learned. Uh, it requires attention to various details. Nice. Uh, as a result, paying attention to these features helped me recognize details when I analyze a reading. I like that you're applying it to academics. That's cool. Or right, answer a question that tries to trick students. More importantly, it's contributed to my observations in reading material. I think this repeats. Um, a little bit. So I think you can maybe cut this. Uh, additionally, I've discovered surfing is correlated with math and physics. Cool. As I've unlocked the realm, this is a nice little montage. I see you doing the, the uncommon connections exercise. Surfing. Look at this, everybody. So in that uncommon connections exercise, which I talk about in lesson two, you've got the, um, this is great. You've got um, the pursuing, let's see, what was the first one? There's I'm actually not super clear on what the quality is that you want to show here besides just like learning to surf. That's not a bad thing, but I don't know if it's like scoring a ton of points for you here. So you could maybe trim or cut this because I'm guessing that this is stuff that most, like any surfing essay would say. Um, not that there are going to be a ton of surfing essays, so I kind of like this as a topic. But, you know, getting up on that first wave is kind of like, that's going to be, I think, kind of common. I'm not saying definitely cut it. But I'm, I'm just saying that, like, I'm more interested in how the application of all these, like, different things that you've learned. And math and physics, uh, let's see. I've learned that waves are also representative pattern, not necessarily because it's continuous, but that its pattern varies and is similar to that of sound and a polynomial graph. You might spend a little more time with this. So if you were to cut, you could go up to that second paragraph, trim it. I'd love to hear more on this. As I thrive and improve my skills in surfing, I will embrace the lifestyle and surfer etiquettes that come along with it. A bit ambiguous. Something else for the ending, perhaps? Because it's a little bit like, I don't feel like it's like your perfect ending yet. I, I'd say keep looking. All right, so just tracking the stories again. So leadership, we've got cheer. The suggestion that I'm making is to like, basically re-brainstorm and use some of these maybe values or we'll call them uncommon connections to kind of set up this oncologist thing. Cause I think that could be kind of cool. Uh, if you don't like that, if you feel like, Oh, I don't want to go through all that work, what you've got is working pretty well. I would just encourage you to give more specifics and I would encourage you to work in a few more details or values or qualities that would help us understand that oncologist thing at the end. If you feel like that's too tough, you can kind of have a different ending. You don't have to end with the oncologist thing. So I just want to give you some options there. Ba -da -da -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. And in this one, I'm just tracking it again. So we're learning about how surfing has helped you to see closer details. And I'm wondering if some of this stuff was in your personal statement, because I think that you could kind of combine some of these things or do that type B personal insight or personal statement exercise and, and, uh, and use that for your personal statement. Anyway, uh, most significant challenge. At the age of 10, uh, we're moving to Hawaii without my dad. My mom was disheartened. My brother was shocked. I was heartbroken and confused. Why? The first several years, we were dependent on other family members. So this is the impact. However, this didn't happen as they withdrew from school. Wow. Thereafter, many people were anticipating the same results from me. Now, when you say withdrew, do you mean dropped out? Um, if so, I would say that. Um, withdrew could just mean kind of, because withdraw is like, oh, he's seeming withdrawn is kind of like an ab abstract concept. Like he's just kind of keeping to himself. Sounds like you're saying they dropped out. Um, and you could be even more colloquial here. Thereafter, so after that, many, many thought I would do the same. So I, I think you could be even more conversational here. 
You know, don't feel like you have to put on a suit, Amy, to like sound nice. Like say it like you'd say it if you were just sitting across the table from somebody. You know, I mean, I would say like actually like record yourself on a voice memo telling this story. When I was 10, my mom sat my brothers and me down and told us we were moving to Hawaii without my dad. So, you know, that, that that's very close to what you have. Um, so anyway, but I'm just encouraging you like kind of as a tone thing, especially with something that's so personal, just anyway, it's a very tiny note. You, what you have is fine. Eventually I realized I didn't want to be constrained to my brother's past, uh, through determination. I strove to become successful in breaking others preconceived notions of me. Um, this is fine, but it sounds a little bit like some of the words will sound like other turning points in how to overcome challenges essay. So like through determination, I strove to become successful. Um, I want to just say beware of language that, and by beware, I just mean be aware. I should say be aware. That's a little bit less alarmist. Be aware of language that sounds like it could be in someone else's PIQ. Okay. At school, I took advanced classes to test my limits, improve my problem solving abilities. Worked hard to earn straight A's. You can just cut the S. Title of being ranked first in my class. In addition to taking rigorous courses, I participate in track and cheer. As I became the main flyer for cheer, I learned how to establish quality relationships and how to trust people. Cool. Note if that's gonna be repeating with the cheer uh, personal insight question. My communication skills started improving. I started expressing myself. Whether performing or racing for a crowd, these sports gave me the courage to voice my opinions. Awesome. Through this voice, became the director and editor of a PSA my classmates and I developed advocating for cool. Uh, consequently, I was able to influence my own family to use active transportation of a healthier lifestyle and reduce their carbon footprint. The connection uh, to this is a bit unclear. So like, how did this lead you to that? I'll just say clarify. For instance, my mom now rides a bike to go to work. I love that that happens. I'm just curious, what was it about? It, and you might just be kind of like generally more, more confident, but it might be kind of a stretch to be like, based on this, you know, I, I did that. Based on like learning to express myself. I don't know. I mean, it could be that if, if you had sort of like a deeper commitment to like the environment that you met, I'm gonna see if, if I fast forward over that. Yeah, there's no mention of environment earlier at, for active transportation. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm spending so much time on this little tiny note, but like I became the director and editor of a PSA. And I was even able, I would just combine these. Um, I would just do this so that it doesn't feel like a separate thing, like that you're saying, oh, based on this. So that the, the, the connection can be a little bit more vague. I, I think you can just combine those. Um, and my mom, my mom now rides a bike to work. Actually, you can probably cut this. Through the course of actions I've taken, uh, I've learned to be independent, discovered I have an interest in bio and chemistry based upon the courses I've taken. Okay, if you're gonna mention the oncologist thing, I, I think cut one of them. Like, I think this is fine. I would just cut, maybe cut the oncologist one above. Just because I don't want them to be like, wait, oncologist, okay, yeah, I see how that's connected to biology and chemistry. I, yeah, I don't want them to be kind of like puzzling that over unless you're gonna walk them through how that leads to all that. Yes, it's something that you could walk them through, but I would just pick one of these personal insight questions to put your, um, therefore this is what I wanna study or this is what I wanna be at the end. My mission to succeed in life has allowed me to accomplish many things and I've yet to learn and further these achievements. A little bit broad here, don't even worry about that because I think you can do something else. Um, so I would say cut this, something else. I know that's not a very good note. This is like my 10 minute version. It's like, what else you got? You can come up with something else. And then um, could be, like I said, if you end up using this, if this maybe no oncologist mention above or vice versa. If you mention oncologist there, maybe you don't need to mention it here. Okay. All right, we're at halftime, uh, just past halftime. And we've gotten through, one, I wanna say like hopefully half, let's take a look. So we're gonna take a little bio break. Yep, Devin's next. Um, Ryuf will try to get to you. Ryan, I think we're gonna be able to get to you if I can keep flowing like this. So let's take uh, five minutes um, 
And let's take, I want to make this large. So in case someone walks in, they're like, where's Ethan? Uh, five minute bio break. They will know. Ba -da -da -da. Okay. So we're doing that. So I will see you in five minutes. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
Okay, hi, I'm back. I'll turn my screen share off for just a second. I just made a smoothie. <laughs> so, not that you needed to know that, but strawberries and purple carrots, in case you were curious. Um, is there any way to bring elements of the Common App essay into the UC Personal Insight questions? Yeah, I mean, for sure. Uh, that's a big question, like which parts? But yes, I mean, some students will just use you know, one, like one of the personal insight questions is basically a short version of their common app. Other students find that like, oh, there are like two or three different parts of me that are in my common app and I'm splitting those out into separate personal insight questions because they're different topics basically. So yeah. All right. Back to the doc, back to the edits. Let's do it. All right. Devin is up. I'll just do a search. Devin. Where are you, Devin? There you are. Okay. Deciding on one or seven, possibly combining. Prompt one's leadership, co-founding, being president of the club. Okay. And then creative side. Ah, 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 ah. Let me just look at the topics. Educational opportunity is the dance summer intensive. Looks a little bit long. Community service. And then why I stand out. What's the topic? Um, as I scan this, I'm not sure what the topic is. So maybe you can help me. Because, and the reason why I'm asking is that I'm not sure it's a great, it, it's going to be a great personal insight question without like picking a topic and like supporting it with specifics. So let me know. You can respond in the comment there. Okay. So these are still in process, it looks like. Um, and the topic for this one is not only dance, express my, but I sing, act, draw, etc. I've been, I've even begun to express my creativity through writing. Oh, got it. Okay. So I'm gonna kind of skim this a little bit, Devin, just to kind of see if I can offer you some big picture notes. However, dance isn't the only way I express my creativity. I do this, transforming old clothes. Um, it's clear that artistry was gained within me. With innovative ideas, I could always be found submerged in a creative project. I think this is fine. I mean, you can kind of just, be, it can be a montage. Sixth grade, got into the Orange County School of the Arts. Dance, artists, but not only dancer, but a singer, and just visual artist and photographer. You know what I would suggest, actually, Devin, is you could just start with a simple sentence that's like, I have a lot of ways that I express my creativity. And then, First paragraph, make it a paragraph on dance and how that's been, you know, and then second paragraph, make it a paragraph on how you started to, what's the next one? Singing. And here's what I learned about singing. And then third paragraph, here's what I learned through writing and then some kind of close. That's my suggestion. Okay. So I would say, I'm going to put this in the, in the comments. So one, set up that your creative in lots of ways, some version of that, lots of wars, whoa. And then there's singing, or sorry, dancing first, whichever one developed first. And then there's singing, and then writing, and then ending, <laughs> okay? That's a way to like restructure this that I think will help you trim a lot of words. And for each one of those, you can use that uncommon connections exercise that I talk about in the module, where it's like, you know, brainstorming, Things that people wouldn't say in typical dancing, singing, writing. You're a triple threat. All right. I attended UCLA's Department of World Arts and Culture's Dance Summer Intensive, but the focus of maturing as a dancer, my devotion came to fruition. Once in a lifetime opportunity captivated my heart's core, dance and intellectual. I think you can dial back some of the language, like captivated my heart's core um, and once in a lifetime educational opportunity. I think you can be just a bit more straightforward just because one of the things that if, if you oversell it, then we kind of go, oh, maybe it wasn't that cool. But if you're like, oh, I did this thing and people are like, whoa, that sounds really cool. So you give a little more room for them to kind of like, so I would say like err on the side of underselling it. I'm not saying that you don't give information. Like if you were one of only 35 people to be chosen for it, that's worth mentioning. Right. But, you know, I would say you don't need to kind of hype it up. Uh, and that's really just like, tiny tweaks in the language. It's really just like 
just deliver the the um, the veggie burger. You don't need to put like tons of ketchup and mustard and then like some onions and like a swizzly thing on it. You can just be like, here's a burger. And they'll be like, wow, that's awesome. That's a really weird metaphor. All right. Um, I love this. We did West African, Hawaiian, postmodern house. Uh, we uncovered history, cultural stereotypes, investigated roles. Awesome. Uh, and mystery, not that, that nuts. I mean, yeah. Divided stereotype and mistreated. I don't mean that that's awesome, but that your awareness changed. Affected immensely by stories of pain, hardship, exclusion. And it sounds like a really awesome program. I now have a vivid understanding of my purpose with an ambition to further my education amongst these fields. Empowered, I choreographed dance moves with intent, telling stories to evoke thought, promise. Great. Okay. So here's what I would suggest. I know I'm reading kind of fast, but I want to do the 10 minute budget thing. I want you to, um, to use the, the revising your essay in five steps exercise, which is like highlighting the first sentence in bold and then making sure that those sentences work really clearly. You know, and, and, and the history example that we looked at last week, I want you to kind of use that one as a model. Okay. Cause when you highlight the first sentences of those, they kind of connect and create the skeleton. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just go back into the course and look at the one that says how to revise your essay. Okay. So look at that exercise. Once you do that, I think it's going to help you know what the bones of your essay are. Sorry, your personal insight question. And then it'll tell, it'll show you what can be cut because I think it's a bit long. Um, I think so. Let me just check. Mm -mm. It's good. But I think in terms of, it's working pretty well, I can tell, but in terms of just clarifying what each paragraph is about, I think that'll help. And then there's something on community service. And then having trouble figuring out a topic for this one, passion for the environment. If you want to pick passion for the environment, Devin, connect it to a series of make it the community service one, make the other one prompt one leadership, and then talk about how you've externalized and made your environment a better place. You know, what clubs, what practices, what habits do you have? How do you do it at home? You know, how do you do it in, in, in the classroom? What, it, what is your, what does your commitment to the environment look like? And how has it made the world a better place? Maybe make that seven. I find it's hard to write for prompt eight. Um, personally, no, I find that students often struggle with it because it's such a broad canvas. Connect it to something specific that the UCs can point back to the 14 points of comprehensive review. Ah, the first time I've mentioned that since the opening. Okay, hope that's useful, Devin. Lydia, let's take a look. All right. So, sorry, I lost my thread. There we go. All right. Leadership. One lesson I learned very early on is that dirt and Disney princesses, princess heels mix very well. I love this last time we read it. I love it again. Growing up as the only girl, family of 11 male cousins, I served as my family's muñequita doll, adorned with puffy dresses, big bows, decorating my tight curls that were formed through hot curling irons, burning the tips of my ears. Is this is a challenges essay. Like any child, I love to play with my cousins. Yet at times their machismo would take over and suddenly I wasn't welcome. My voice wasn't heard. Every callate, be quiet, would give me... I know somebody's going to read that and they're going to be like, K-late? What does she mean, K-late? would give me more of a reason to raise my voice, to stand taller, to make more, make direct eye contact. Yes. Love it. I constructed strong pillars of research and evidence to strengthen my points about sports. Yes. For politics, silencing my cousins and uncles. I took my grandmother's teaching of how to walk in heels and stripped it to its essence. Every step you take, be strong. Feel the confidence so deep inside you that you radiate it. That just there's just a little phrasing here that just tripped me up a little bit. May it's like is it like may every step you take be strong so you can feel the confidence? So I would just like just tweak this slightly because it seems like there's just a couple words maybe missing there. I did that with my words as I grew. I learned how to appreciate the perspective each person brings. My concept of a leader is someone who can step up and know when to step down to allow ooh and encourage others to grow. Yes, insight. I'm just gonna highlight this because when I see it, I like to point it out. Listen to this, y'all. My concept of a leader is someone who can step up and know when to step down to allow and encourage others to grow. That's that's a nice, unique phrasing. I, I haven't heard anybody quite say it that way before, even though I, I know what you're talking about. These lessons uh, were embroidered onto my being. I love that little, little bit of poetry, reminding me of where I come from. I would never be silenced again. Last year, I was one of the main organizers of high-tech High Chula Vista and Olympians High School's school walkout. Ah, high tech, high, ch high tech high, Chula Vista 
and uh, put commas maybe just to um, she lived in high school high school walkout against gun violence where uh, I was able to create an environment for the youth to give to voice their perspectives and take a stand. I'm also the leader of the Voices in Politics Club. I think this is probably capital P, capital C. These are just tiny notes. The focus of this club, you could say the focus of which here, right? Uh, of which is to acquire tools to have civil discourse and represent the many political perspectives in our school. Um, let's see. Um, one of my central focuses. So this is kind of is kind of a run on. One of is to grow understanding. Okay, so I'm also the leader of this. The focus of which is to acquire tools to have this. And you could just say and, you know, right here. And grow in understanding through empathy works. As one of the leaders, whoops, sorry, I messed up here. In my backpacking club, again, I would kind of maybe just do a little capital C here. Apart from pushing myself to do physical rigorous, physically rigorous activities, um, I also focus on pushing others to step up and assume leadership roles. At a very early age, I had to learn how to find many ways of being able to have my voice heard. Along the way, I was able to acquire vital tools to become an effective leader. Boom. Love it. I think it's beautiful. So clear. Great. Done after tiny notes above. Oh, and after cutting 43 words. Um, where can you cut? Mm -hmm. I think you can probably get, let's see, let me just look really quick. I think you can cut this because we get it. And I'm looking for like a chunk. If you want to, you could probably use the thinning scissors, which is like when you have thick hair like mine, sometimes the barber growing up would have to take these scissors that cut like every other hair. <laughs> and you can kind of do that with your personal insight question. You can kind of go through it and do that. Or you can just hack off a piece, like a chunk, 31 words right there. Great work. I've always grown cohesively with my art. As a result, painting has bestowed many skills onto me. I'm a little bit unclear on what this means. Always grown cohesively with my art. But you might just consider rephrasing that because it's really important, I think, to have a really clear opening sentence for these personal insight questions. Again, because your reader might be skimming. Your reader's probably skimming. Let me show you how fast I think the readers are reading. Uh, here's what I think. If I was a, a UC reader, and this is from talking to friends of mine who are, this is about how fast they read. Creativity, okay, art, painting, concrete floor, grandmother, um, importance of persistence, refinement, passion, great. She created this piece, uh, smiles and reactions, people liked it, uh, education. Uh, let's see, favorite part, there's a typo here. Um, mass incarceration. Oh, cool. So she somehow took this stuff and made it socially relevant. Oh, that's cool. And by embedding these topics allows me to be, oh, ultimate goal is address these issues. Okay, cool. Painting is my mentality to undertake many tasks. Oh, scientist. Okay, cool. While I paint cohesively, another little typo, uh, use micro macro perspective. Ooh, smart, rel reflectively. Okay, cool. So what I get from this, that's about how fast. It's probably a little bit faster. They'll probably read a little faster. And you need to cut 60 words. Does the order make sense? What should I cut out? Should I focus on a different direction? Thanks for these questions. So let me try to answer these. I like the direction. Um, and I like that each paragraph is kind of up leveling. Um, did you notice the parts where I kind of skimmed like a little bit faster? I think you can kind of trim this. So this is, I think you could trim, you know, 40 words from here. Because I want to get to, everybody's going to be writing about, yeah, I painted this and painted that. Get me to this part, which is going to help set you apart. Involving the community. Um, you could probably trim another 20 words in here. And then, and I'm a future career as a scientist. Yeah, this is great. I think after trimming, you should be good. All right, educational opportunity, junior year. I, I mean, I always say, you can just be like, junior year, I got some unexpected news. Father was diagnosed with cancer. In my immense confusion, turned to understanding. I turned to understanding as my only means of help. Unclear. Um, so, like, clarify this. 
kind of like the reading like the UC reader. I'm gonna do that again. So internship, Salk Institute, analyzed this science stuff, did some like real science stuff. Interesting. Just make sure when you're just make sure you proofread these. The beginning had self-doubts, lost in terminology, but didn't give up. Uh, watched stuff, grew, news data was contributed to larger chain. Oh, Khan Academy, reached out on, on your own. That's cool. I uh, became immune to motion sickness. <laughs> One other thing I learned. Thought of without the visionaries and creative thinkers, my father wouldn't be here. Now I was able to partake a small. Yeah, just rephrase this. Um, achieving this. Okay, good. I like this. Yes, I like this ending. Um, and the reason I like it, and I'm, and I'm kind of saying something different from what I said to Amy earlier, is that you've said above scientists, and then you get more specific with biomedical engineer. And I think that kind of is part of the same narrative in a way that is really easy for my brain to like, you know, get. So yeah, that's, I think that's great. Um, yeah, that's working. The confession to make is the last one, passion, I get a little too embedded. So is the topic passion us justice system oh no so there are flaws in the us justice system taking this information so there's something here um and i helped the california innocence project oh neat i'm just going to highlight the so understand the terminology interviewed forensic scientists the more i read the more i came to understand things truly came to develop the skills of being open-minded and always accumulating all perspectives before coming to a conclusion. Okay, let me pause for a second and say, if anybody, if like, if you're feeling, is this Lydia? Is that who I'm, who's I'm reading? Let me scroll back up. Sorry, I've forgotten. Ba -da -da. Yeah, Lydia, if you're reading and hearing me do this and I'm going so fast and you're like, ah, oh, I wish Ethan would be giving me some specific advice, like how, like what specific things to cut and hold. I, I just can't in this format do that and still, you know, get, let everybody get seen. So um, two ideas, and this is for everybody who's listening. One is if you identify as low income and you're it's like, maybe say you didn't pay for this course, which was great. Um, you know, then you can go to the match lighters site. So just Google match lighters college essay guy and get free essay help. Cause I have counselors who are standing by to take your calls who will help you for four hours of essay help. So you can just apply at collegeessayguy.com slash matchlighters. If you aren't low income, if you're middle income or upper upper middle income, um, then you can get help through a company called Prompt. Um, and if you, the, I'll, I'll put a link below this that will give you really low cost essay help, okay? And they'll help you with the personal insight questions. So I'll, I'll send you more links on that. That's for people who really wanna get into some of the nitty gritty because some of the stuff I'm giving is high level. High level wise, you're doing great. Okay. Um, these topics are great. The structure is great. I, I really appreciate that you're using the exercises that I, I can tell just by the way that you're highlighting these first sentences. Um, so I'm appreciating that. What else? I mean, just, I'm just skimming the rest of it. All my life I've been pushing doors up and hoping it will help and lead the way to others. Oh, so it gets a little bit long here. Okay. So there, there are two options, and I know this is gonna sound obvious, but either like cut out a big chunk or use the thinning scissors. I think that if you do get into this, you know, we'll have to be a very short version of this. I, I think could work, but like maybe 50 words, okay? And if you cut this down to 50 words, let me just tell you where that'll get us, you know, that's gonna get you like 100 words. You're gonna be within the, the ending or within the word, count limit. And the reason I'm suggesting, cause it's like kind of jumping to one more step of this. And just like, in terms of like the length of the paragraphs, um, I mean, maybe you cut it down to like 65 words or 75 words, and then you can kind of trim from earlier. Um, okay. Good work. You're doing great. I hope that was useful. It's mostly me saying, keep going. Okay. Let me just take a sip. All right, I hope it's okay that I'm still reading these aloud. Zainab, leadership essay. First paragraph, if you all were like me and you just read that first paragraph while I was sipping on my smoothie, you'll see that there was a problem. The principal's mistreating students. I had to take action, confronted the vice principal. Even though I'd solved this problem, mm, unclear. Because I don't know if you solved this problem, 
The vice principal's general eligibility for children. Yeah. I, I mean, just rephrase that, right? Because it's like, it, it does make us go, did you solve this problem? It sounds like you just told the principal how you felt and like gave the kid a hug. Now, I wanted to report the problem to the principal because I fear this. I instead asked the principal to establish a weekly meeting where the teachers could share us sensitive ways to deal with children when feeling frustrated, give me permission. Wow. Me, leader of a weekly front, ended up benefiting all the teachers. Vice principal became more pleasant. Told herself the meetings were helping her. Wow, this is so cool. This is such leadership. Being the leader of a large group of adults gave me the experience I needed to be the leader in other areas of my life. Homeschooling co-op, I attended had great academics, lacked the clubs. I organized a science club. Uh, I've learned that leadership is not about a title, but about solving a problem in a way that helps others. Boom, insight, yes. Bye, <laughs> I love it. Uh, the degree in psychology will help me do this more effectively. This is awesome. I don't have too many notes for this because I'm like loving the, like almost like the danger of this, like speaking up to an adult. Like I, I get a little worried as I read this opening, but then like the fact that the vice principal like responded and you set up this club, it's amazing. Two thumbs up Four, an educational, significant educational opportunity. While living and studying in Saudi Arabia four years ago, I faced an obstacle uh, or, or an educational obstacle. At that time, women were not allowed to drive. And this posed a problem for my family because I was homeschooled. My tutor lived more than an hour's drive away. My father had been recently diagnosed with cancer and was not well enough to drive me. The only solution was to hire a driver. But because my family couldn't afford to pay a driver every day, I could do my work alone and meet with my tutor once a week. This was two challenges. First, my work was only due at the end of the week. I had a tendency to procrastinate. Secondly, I found it hard to understand my school work without a teacher there to hold my hand. I don't know if this is showing great qualities because it's three questionable qualities. One is the procrastination. Two is like needing handholding. And three is like the privilege of like having a tutor because that's a privilege not afforded to most students. Um, so I don't know if this is a great topic. Let me see. When I started my year of high school, needed a change, created a schedule, often difficult, learned to persevere, hard work paid off, gradually completing assignments, got a 4.0. I don't, I don't know if this is the best topic. I think I would suggest something else because I think that all of this, like which is most of the personal insight question, uh, or at least half of it, is not necessarily helping your case. Another topic, I would suggest another topic. Um, what other topics have you considered? Um, yeah. I'm coming, when I came back to Amman, Jordan, after having been away for several years, I immediately became aware of a very pressing problem that could be noticed all over, a lack of easily accessible books. All right, libraries were almost non-existent. Um, children who lived in my neighborhood had almost no access. I was very concerned with the dearth of books. This repeats a little bit. Wanted to take action. so. Split these up. You kind of rushed this, I think, a little bit. So this is the Elon Musk structure again. That's how the official lending library came to be. Bye to the children. The news spread by word of mouth. That's cool. Happy to be some assistance. But I longed to open a real library. Since it had the funding, I was delighted when, and there's some typos, I can tell you rushed this. Some of my neighbors were planning to start a library and volunteer my services. Cool. In the months that followed, I became part of an ambitious team that worked very hard to turn out, wow, laminating books, here's what I did, hung signs, helped to do this. The result was a library, wow, so cool. Every day, I see the results of my efforts. My community's progressed from a virtual book desert to a place where books are everywhere. Awesome. Yes, go with this. Clean up all the, you know, make some paragraphs. Clean up all the language, proofread it. I think this can work really well. I think you've got two really strong topics. Um, the, the first one is just great. And the seventh one is great. I would pick two others that just show other sides to you. All right. All right. Let me see. Did you respond to my comment about what other topics? I'm going to just check and see if you didn't. Okay. All right. Moving right along. Miriam, what's your greatest talent or skill? Oh, remember we talked about this last time. And then you've got, okay, so memorizing the Quran. So memorization and how that helped. And then significant educational opportunity. The topic is um, some maybe learning a language. I'm not sure exactly yet. I want to be able to get it. Do you guys see how I want to be able to like read and just like get the topic? 
go back to Mayhar's. <laughs> Look at Mayhar's personal insight questions. All right. What's your greatest talent or skill? For 1400 years, the Quran, Islam's 604 page Arabic holy book, has been preserved through an oral tradition. Um, at 10 years old, I was given the opportunity to take classes. At first, I was reluctant, but my love of challenge, let me stick with it. Um, I kind of want the thing, like the, the greatest talent, right there. Can you can you name it in the first paragraph? Um, I know this is very like blunt what I'm asking you all to do, but I kind of think this is like a style thing that the UCs are looking for. Is like, what is wait, what's our topic? What is your greatest talent? And I know I kind of skimmed there a little bit, but I think it should pop for the reader. Coming from an Indo-Pak family, the letters of the Arabic language didn't come to me naturally. I spent long hours. Um, then came the actual memorization. For four years, I went from memorizing this to this after finishing my homework. The day I recited the 300, this is amazing. I felt the full weight of my accomplishment. Um, felt it, okay. I, I think you should start this personal insight question with, so I memorized the Quran. Yeah. And just really quickly recount what you did. And then say, the day I recited the 304th page, I felt the full weight of my accomplishment. And like that's like one third of your personal insight question. Because then I want to know, so what? Like, what did you learn through this process? You know, what else did you apply it to? Okay. So those are my notes. Let me just write this in the margin really quick. Um, let's see. So one, start with the amazing fact. And then two, um, you know, tell us how you did it. And maybe end this section with, you know, the day I recited, I'm just gonna put this section, section I'm highlighting. <laughs> and then, and then three, and that's like, I want to say this is like maybe 125 words in. Answer, so what, for the next 225 words. Okay, that's my restructuring suggestion for you. How have you taken advantage of a significant educational opportunity? Okay, I want to try and get it. So that's why I'm, so a sheltered American girl, comfortable, don't, I think I said this to you last time. Don't say that you're just normal and sheltered and, you know, point to privilege or blending it in this. You are a unique flower. Uh, I would go to a college prep private school, take APs, um, success. All that change when we announced we're going to Jordan to board, broaden our horizons. Okay. I don't know how much of this context we need. Let's see. So I was in a foreign school. Textbooks, tough, bewildered and afraid. Impossible to keep up the 4.0, but pulled myself together. Professor at Georgetown once told me this. It sounds like a little bit of a name drop. It sounds like the 4.0 GPA is a little bit of a drop, like a, a GPA drop. Um, on, the, on the side, I took online classes. I finished school year with a 4.0 and the highest GPA in the class. Fully embraced new culture, made many friends along the way. Yeah, I, I think this can work. I mean, I, I think this is of the you know, however many topics you considered, I, I'm, I'm sure you probably rank this in the top four. I kind of want to know other parts of you. And the reason why I'm not jumping on this topic and being like, yes, is that it's such a common topic of like, I moved. And this is the kind of thing that I think that you could potentially do in a very short additional information section. So we haven't talked about that a lot. In the additional information section, you can basically give context of like school switches, for example. Um, and you could probably work this into like a bullet point version and use your personal insight question to talk about something else. So you're like scoring points, as it were, in another category, another one of these personal or these 14 points of comprehensive review category. So I think that's maybe what I would suggest here. I, I, I kind of want to like have, I want this information to be there because I want you to be able to be like, hey, I went through like a really tough time and like, here's what I did about it and here's what I learned. I'm not saying don't do it for this, but if you do do it for this, I think we're going to need some, a little bit more content. So that BB exercise might help. I would suggest kind of broadly, like I would say trim this to like, what was it? The person above had like 38 words uh, for the challenge. I'm kind of making a joke when I say 38 words, but kind of not. So maybe 38 words for the challenge. I mean, you know, 
60 words, like not too much of it. Cause I, you know, set up the challenge quickly. Right now, this is using about 176, which is like half of your word count. Um, and I want to get into all the positive awesomeness of you. So this will be an important part. And then the what I learned. Um, and this is cool. Frame drum, dance up. This is awesome. Most importantly, if I have a goal, push myself, I can achieve anything. And then don't do this, right? So this is common language. Could this be in someone else's essay? Sure. I have a goal in mind and push myself, I can achieve anything. You can put that at the end of most of these personal insight questions. So I would try a different ending. So first advice, try the additional info section. If you really want to do this, shorten the challenge and give us more of what you did and more of what you learned. All right, we are at Ryan. Are we getting close to the end? Let me see. Oh, we've had more people join us. Have we? Let's see. Rayouf is last. Okay. Who are all these? What are all these pages then at the end? All right, let's take a look. Ryan, and if we've got time, Rayouf, I'm happy to get to yours. All right. Leadership. My church's day camp. All right. First, did it to hang out with my friends, leading lessons, songs, and games. It was a highlight. My purpose didn't change. I worked in the camp every summer. Then I became co-director, bada bing. Suddenly, younger staff were looking to me to give directions, make decisions, responsible, proactive, organized. These are somewhat common, like, right? So in the, check out that, that UC exercise um, that I talk about in lesson two, and it'll help differentiate you from other co-directors of other day camps. Um, felt a purpose. I loved hearing kids chatter, hearing about parents. This is good. I mean, it, it's going to blend in a little bit because some of the stuff you're saying is what we would expect at a day camp. So unless you kind of decide for the whole paragraph that you're like, I'm going to focus on some uncommon, I'm going to make some uncommon connections, then it'll be good, but it won't be like, wow, this is one of the best, you know, day camp essays I've ever read. Because this is, because it's a pretty common topic of like volunteering for some kind of summer camp. Um, I find any solutions for this. As a more reserved person, I'm surprised by how much I enjoy taking on this role. Uh, love being a big brother. Yeah, this is fine. It works fine. So you could totally submit this, Ryan, but it's gonna be somewhat common. Um, the UC exercise will help. Um, but you may not wanna put that much work in. You might be like, you know what? I'm good. Um, so let's look at five. So naming a challenge. Being swarmed with many severe anaphylactic allergies wasn't easy. Carrying up a pen, uh, uh, eating special foods, and these are like the, the, the bullet points, right? Never wanted to draw attention to myself. So I began to accept my uniqueness and become more confident. Uh, in class, I would raise my hand, notice food allergies were becoming more prevalent. And, and did this impact your academics? Because that's one of the things that in this, you know, how has this challenge impacted your academic achievement? Has it? Because, and, and I'm going to read the rest for Ryan, but like, I wonder if this one is a stretch um, for this one, because they're they're looking for, did this have some kind of impact on academics? Let's see. Um, I could see, I'll share my experience, made the burden lighter for them. So you shared positive stuff with others. Being unique allowed me to connect with other kids with food allergies. Um, I also became more aware of others around me and began to think outside myself. Okay, this awareness affected me in a number of ways. I no longer hated attention, began to speak up on issues. I'm, I'm questioning, is this the best, best topic for you? Are there other topics, Ryan, that would help you come back to the 14 points of comprehensive review? There was one other thing I forgot to say to you, by the way, on the above personal insight question. In this one, if you can kind of split this into separate paragraphs of like, this can kind of all be trimmed to one thing. And it's like, as co-director, I did X, Y, Z, and Q. Like the things that you would expect a co-director of a camp to do. But then in a new paragraph, I mean, and there are many ways that you can go with this, which is why I want you to do the Uncommon Connections exercise. You can talk about a whole different set of values. Um, anyway, but on this one, yeah, is that, I would be curious to see from your activities list what other things that you could potentially talk about. Let's see what else you got. Academic subject. Passion for programming was born in fifth grade, Khan Academy. My short attention span caused my computer science. Cool. There was a hot list which featured all the latest popular programs. Voted up, the hot list was littered with this alongside the programs. 
Crash Engine, but the fact that these games and programs are made by others like me, kids, um, through Khan Academy, self taught my, I think you can cut a lot of this. Um, I think you can cut most of this because I'm wanting, I kind of want to know what did you do and what did you learn? This is kind of set up. So give us, there's something that made you curious and created my own games. This is the money part. Taught myself coding. Um, and so much so that I, some weekends I don't even change in my pajamas. This is good. I'm going to just highlight in bold because I think this kind of stuff is like, it's like, here's what I did. So what did you learn about it? Uh, I got 5,000 votes. Um, the most rewarding experience was when a kid on Khan Academy told me that he and his friends were addicted to my game, FFA Shooter, and played it at school every day. Because of this, this is mentioning, and I don't know what kind of shooting it is, um, I, would, I would cut the mention of the title. Um, and I would just say they were addicted to one of my games. And I don't even know if I would say addicted. Um, I would cut addicted too. So there are two stigmatized topics, right? Like video game addiction and like shooting. Um, and you're kind of coupling them here in a way that may not help your case. Um, so yeah, well, what I think you're doing is saying, hey, people liked my games and here's a bit of evidence. Be careful. Uh, coding is a language of its own, has logical reasoning. Through the last couple of years, I've extended my skills beyond the beginner level, taking a junior college, great. <coughs> this is what we want. In addition, share my passion with others. Cool, to be coding camp. So you might split these up, All right? Here's what I would suggest is like, I'm interested in computer science. I taught myself through Khan Academy, like make that the next paragraph. And then, um, and then make this part of the same thing, like put this in the same paragraph. Oops, anyway, put that in the same paragraph as the other one. And then tell us about the junior college class, expand, use the history one. So we talked last week about this history personal insight question, use that one as a model. And then give us a little paragraph on the coding camp, what you learned there. Um, and share with all the kids. You'll find a new ending, I think. Um, you know, how might you apply this in the future? I'm nervous about your next topic because it says unique mindset and it doesn't feel like a topic. It feels like it's gonna be a montage. I haven't read it yet, but sometimes when, when I hear a topic like that, it ends up kind of being all over the place. So I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, I'm nervous because I'm just might gonna maybe say find a more specific topic. Rational and logical thinker, love math, uh, computer science, we've already mentioned that. We already mentioned computer science, philosophy and reason. Um, it's still an application of reason and philosophy. Something about philosophy, the total entropy of the universe, so a cool philosophical concept. So this is maybe like a philosophy essay, but it, it's it's in your mind and it's not yet externalizing. What did you do? How did you, like the way that the, so I don't, that's what I'm saying is like, I think that the computer science one is a great topic because it's like you've externalized it and you've done stuff about it. The philosophy one right now so far is kind of in your mind. So even though you have a unique mindset, in terms of what the UCs are looking for, I would go back to the activities list and go, okay, if you wanna talk about the philosophical mindset, how have you been able to apply it? Okay, I, again, I think that eight is like a really tough prompt to write for. So I would try and actually go back and look at, are there other activities that I wanna talk about in different prompts other than eight? Okay, so quick recap, I like the coding one, go back to the history essay and, and potentially model it after that, not like literally use the words, but notice how each paragraph kind of levels up. I think that's gonna, this one's gonna work really well. I would try something else other than the allergies one. And I think that uh, the first one um, is gonna benefit from the UC exercise. All right. Where are you if we made it? We made it to you, here we go. As a hijabi living in Europe, so this is leadership, I'm regularly exposed to public's rhetoric on the hijab, a big part of my identity. I was hyper aware of the lack of representation for hijabi women in the tech world. To put it simply, I was unsatisfied with the status quo and had a burning desire to prompt change. Great. As such, my 15 year old self turned to the world emojis. 
I didn't expect you to say that. I began writing a 10 page proposal to the Unicode consortium, which deals with all the characters on our keyboards to propose the addition of the hijab emoji. What? I sent out dozens of emails to tech influencers to further push the proposal, but to no avail. I'm, I'm in, I'm, let's, I'm on board. What do I sign? Although oblivious to the statistics, I was certain that the ridiculous amount of emails, number of emails, because you can count them, must give me at least one response that didn't begin with a frustrating, sorry, person X is unavailable to assist. Alexis Ohanian, co-founder of Reddit, appeared to be the proof of my loosely backed hypothesis. With his ardent support, we scheduled an, a an AMA on Reddit where I received both positive and negative reactions. The backlash extended from hate letters sent to my home on Austrian to Austrian politicians making hurtful remarks on Facebook. But with all the attention my proposal garnered, came to bait. Cool. I think some of this can be trimmed, but I'm into it. People were beginning to participate in open dialogue, another objective of my project. Yes. Consequently, when I was asked to present speeches and interviews, I was sought as an opportunity to break the echo chambers that reinforce stereotypes. This is worthy of a personal statement. I'm sorry you only have 350 words to discuss this. Throughout, through these two years, I was confident in what I wanted to achieve, that not even remarks from politicians nor hate letters could deter me. My self-belief materialized when the emoji was released in November 2016 by several companies like Apple, Google, and Facebook. You did that? I also began receiving a countless number of heartfelt messages from women around the world expressing their thanks for the representation that my project brought about. Wow, I got goosebumps. I, I feel like I'm meeting a celebrity. And if this is the outcome of something seemingly small, then I will continue to prompt change. Okay. Because there is a stigma, and I, I really like what you're saying, and you, you have so few words to do this, um, and I love that you say lack of representation. I would love for you just to give a little bit of a, a, a sense right here of like why it's important to you, just so that we get, I want us to hear your voice. What is not being represented? Okay, just give us a little bit of that here. I think your second paragraph is working really well. There's obviously some more stuff in here that you can't fit in, but like co-founder of Reddit was mentioned. And then, gosh, I just said that it's working really well. That's the one I said, said you should maybe trim. Uh, how do you get this into 350 words? I don't know. This is working well. And then the, the success. I don't know how you cut this. It's such a lot. There's a lot of plot here because it's such a, and, and like, I didn't read anything being like, oh, you can cut that. This is a tricky one to trim. And the reason, only reason, I'm only talking like one sentence here you have, is like, and you can maybe even work it in to this opening here. How long is it? Somebody's looking to see how long it is. How much do we need to, because I, I want you to fit in like two sentences here, 346. I don't know. I think it's thinning scissors, which is like, you know, cut a few words here and there. Sorry, I can't be more helpful with that. It's a great topic. The structure is working. You're a rock star. Picture this, two sisters and one orange. This is the educational opportunity. Both sisters need the orange. So what's their next call of action? One sister can have it while the other is left with nothing. Or is cutting in half the best option? Is there a way that both can be 100% satisfied? Yes, through dialogue. One sister, okay. It's taking a little bit long to get into this one. The, through being selected to uh, the KAICID Youth Workshop, I was exposed to the intricacy of what it means to have dialogue. I learned that prior to what I believe, dialogue is not merely the act of discussion. It's whether inter or interreligious, intercultural, inter civilizational, an outlet of interaction between two or more people with different backgrounds. Cool. That's a lot. I want to get into the thing. So I think you can kind of trim essentially the representative example, I think, can be shortened hopefully to two, maybe three sentences max. Da, 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 boom, through dialogue. It's not going to be as satisfying, but I want to get into the thing. So I took this workshop and was exposed to this. Um, it's a lot of language. Um, maybe it's okay. During the workshop, I was fortunate enough to be able to review real life case studies. Oh, wow. Working conflict areas. Um, through putting prejudice to the side and, and putting faith in others' humanity, religious leaders in these communities were able to dissolve tension by extension. It's unclear to me, oh, you reviewed real life case studies. Got it. Although I always put in a value. I, I want to know a little bit more about what you did. Like, were you just sitting reading? Were you discussing? Although I always put a value and vocalize my thoughts, I simultaneously choose to raise my words, not my voice. Great. How? I enjoy finding flaws. My participation in Model UN in both Berlin and Prague. It takes a little while to get to like the next. In the in, again, I'm going to reference that history essay. 
to get to the next thing. So there's something about model UN that's coming, but I just think it takes too long to get to it just based on your word budget. So here I want to know, what did you do? And then I think shorten the transition so that we get to model UN and what you've done there. And so what? Um, I willingly seek opportunities to test my ability to stand my ground. Awesome. Love this phrasing. So much of the seeking discomfort has become second nature to me. Awesome. Period. Whoops. I love this. And I, I, it's, there's such strength from these, this language. Debate and dialogue might seem antithetical, but I beg to differ. Oh, debate encourages people to voice their stance. Dialogue. There we go. Using both, we can, I'm sure we all get the orange. I like the orange. Okay. I want you to keep the orange. I just want you to shorten the intro. <laughs> okay. So can you, can this be trimmed? And then I think this is fine. Um, you review these cases. What else? What did you do? And then I think just setting up the debate and dialogue thing a little bit. Yeah. Just, I'm, it's just basically I'm saying, you know, shorten this. And I really love this ending. Love this ending. This is my favorite conclusion that I read today. Love this. It just, the, the reason I love it, y'all, is, you know, a, a great ending should feel surprising, but inevitable. Okay. Surprising in the sense of like, oh, debate and dialogue. Oh, I see the structure, how it's working. But inevitable, like, of course. And then the orange mentioned at the end, full circle. The, an orange is a full circle. Academic subject, because we've just got a couple minutes left. I'm going to kind of skim this one. What's the topic? Hearing someone speak, I shout and a few will attempt to be louder. Wow, this One Young World Summit truly is an epicenter. So it's, okay, so it's a, a summit. An uproar of applause fills the room, uh, speaks selfish businesses. I can contemplate it for a second. I recalled previous economics lesson. So I think this is on economics. I wondered with the professor of the session finished, we all rose, we're about to leave. The moderator said Q and A. Youngest person in the room. I didn't ask, ask the question, but that didn't matter. Um, still ended up scouring the internet for essays. Economics. Okay. I, I'm going to recommend a, a different approach for this one. Right, if, I feel like if it's going to be about economics, it needs to be not about a specific, like this is kind of a narrative that doesn't really pay off because you didn't get to answer the question or ask the question. Even if you had asked the question, I think you were using too many words to focus on a particular moment when I think that there's more that you could be saying about your journey with economics. And so I would recommend doing more of a montage, which is to say, find a few different scenes that are economics related. Again, I'm gonna refer back to that history essay because I love it so much and talk about how your interest in economics has developed and manifested in many areas of your life. That is my suggestion. Okay, we are at time. AJ, sorry, we didn't get to you, um, but that was a lot. There's a lot of me talking. Um, that was helpful. Good. I'm glad, Lydia. Um, cool. So I'm like out of breath. I'm almost done with my smoothie too. Any questions? Um, what questions do you have as we as we wrap here? We'll we'll take just a couple questions, and um, then we'll call it. Was this helpful? I hope so. Y'all are doing some really lovely work. I'm so glad that you went through the videos and, you know, like did the work. I, that's that's what's great. I mean, I, I just see that you like you from using the Elon Musk exercise to the UC exercise to like how to revise your PIQ. You guys are crushing it. So kudos. Keep going. Um, I will, you know, you'll you'll find in, under the link to this video, you'll see a little the little two places that I mentioned to get feedback. If you want, if you need to uh, keep getting, you know, if you want more, more, more input on these and um, uh, Safa, why does the order of essays matter? I just think that the reader, when they like, when you click the prompts, like the buck, the boxes of like, here's the one I'm choosing. Like that's how, as I understand it, it, up, it loads for the reader. And so they're going to read the first one first, et cetera, et cetera. So it's just kind of like, if I'm playing four songs for you, I, I want to know which song I'm playing for you first. Ultimately, it doesn't matter a ton, a ton. I just want to know, like, you can almost think of these as kind of like four parts of one story. And I know that they're going to be on different stories, but, you know, what information are they going to be equipped with? 
also, I think it's good to like start, I mentioned this last time, but I think it's good to start with your strongest one and end with a strong one. All right. All right, friends. Uh, I'll see you next time. There's tons more, of course, on the website. And um, thanks for joining the course. Bye.